Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. I always like to go back, 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 rewind, rewind, rewind back, you know, in the day and, and kind of chop it up about the history and how you got to where you are today. And uh, specifically, um, you were an original baby crip, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Forgive me because I've heard conflicting stories. Was it crip or crib? Is Which one? How, well, you have actually two. You had the cribs and you had the crips. Okay. Which it ultim ultimately ended up being the crips. Um, and I believe it was in Inglewood where you had the cribs on the west side started. In, in the west side of L.A., you had the uh, Cribs, but on the east side, you had the Crip Gang that started back in about 1971. Okay. And and back then, <clears throat> we had actually about three sections of Crips. You had uh, Raymond Washington, which was down in the 70s, 76. And then you have a, a, a couple of founders that people don't talk about people don't give notoriety or credit to and the leader of my era was mac thomas mac thomas was the leader of the 103rd street east side baby crips and you probably heard of jamel yep but there was also another guy named Lil james heard all of those names okay so then you had those guys down like on 118th street so <clears throat> um back in those days all three of those gangs would come together. We would have meetings. And then you also, and the Crips was the OGs. I would say they was in the range from about 15 to 18 years old up in there. Damn, those are OGs. And, yeah, those those were the OGs. And I was a baby Crip at that time. I was 13. So you, you had guys like 14, 13, 12, maybe you might have found some if it's maybe 11 back in that back in those days but <clears throat> back in those days we all came together because of, of many reasons but you know you have the acronym a community revolution in progress <laughs> excuse my animals no it's okay don't worry about it now <laughs> i have a puppy here my it's dogs all good. <laughs> it's all so, good but is that is that true though i've heard conflicting stories on that also about the community revolution in progress and, and mostly I've heard that it, it wasn't the case well that was the case okay as far as I'm concerned in our area okay um somebody else from another different clique of Crips or coming in at another time may have some different understandings because when you look at and do your research you do find some stories where parts are missing something may be conflicting so <clears throat> you do have that you know where you might find a little something here that you didn't see there or you might get something there that don't quite jive with somewhere else but to to my recollection that that was an ac acronym mm. because at that time it, it, it really wasn't a game and in our area, the gang be for the Crips in our area. We, we, uh, when I was a little boy, I stayed on Central Avenue. You had the Central Gang. Mm -hmm. The Central Avenue, those dudes was, and you know, older than me. That was I was a little boy, six, seven. Okay. You know, little bitty boy. Understanding that back at that time, but um, the baby Crips, we was a little bitty dude that kind of tagged along with the big dudes and made the gangs a little much larger and we did some of the dirty work that the you would probably put a foot soldier on what were some of the gangs just before the crips were popping oh it, it was a lot you had slossons you had the avenues down deep and watch you had the pig meats um even where you have the uh 
uh, bottom hunters out of the Nicholson Gardens. They were, uh, I believe, to my recollection, before the bottom hunters, they were the Green Jackets. Mm -hmm. So it was a, it was, a, it was a lot. Of, and then back then, they didn't call themselves gangs; they called themselves clubs. Okay. So we allowed America to dictate what we would call ourselves, mm. because they would give us the name in the media, wow. and it took hold. Anything the media speaks up on, it takes hold. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, 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 I would have to not just blame America, but also us as youngsters for, for not having no real guidance as far as walking amongst the, the uh, projected outcome or what it was planned to be. Because in, in the original, when it was beginning, it was about protecting our name. It wasn't about crime, it wasn't about drugs in the beginning. It was about coming together protecting the community where you live, keeping other gangs from coming out, or even criminals from coming out, breaking in homes, messing with the kids and the women. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's been a lot of changes over these last five centuries or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With these gangs, it's, it's just, you know, I, I just say uh, the indoctrination has changed. Mm. Yeah. Uh, what Did you have a name that you went by back then? Well, back then... Yeah. Uh, my name was Baby Mix. Baby Mix, okay. <laughs> Baby Mix way back then, you okay, know. Okay, okay. But, um, <clears throat> you know, as I what year did you was join? in middle, in 71. Okay, when, so you, when, oh, you it, original. Yeah, when, when it first started, I was right there. I lived on 103rd Street in Clovis, the big house. It was called the, the big house right there, two-story house right there. You, back in that day, you would find hundreds of crips out there. Anywhere up and down 103rd right there, you know, because that's where we would meet. We'd meet down on the county, down there. That's where uh, our leader stayed, uh, Mac Thomas. Mm -hmm. and, and and the thing that kind of upsets me with all this out here with the notoriety, Mac doesn't get his problems because he's the godfather of all the Compton Crips. Why do you think he doesn't get his due uh, people like alex alonzo and people like kev max shout out to them they they mm -hmm. give him props they they definitely have yes. his name alive but yes you're right i no, have to give no him credit else. for that yeah no one else does why do you think that is because they don't know they don't know um you know um mac uh then because of reasons had to move from 103rd because back in that day it was a uh Big, big, big shootout up there at his house with the Brims. The Brims, which was a West Side Blood gang, uh, um, they found out where he lived, and and he got, I think his brother got shot. I think his dad got shot. So his dad and they moved to Compton, and so that's where your your, your cop deep down in the Compton Crips started. The Grandies, the Park Village, your front hoods. And it just and it just expounded, you know, to what Compton is today. So, you know, every time I speak, I have to give Mac Thomas, you know, his credit where where it's due, along with Raymond, along with Tookie, along with Jamel, along with Lil James. You know, those you get those if you get those guys together, you could get up to three thousand crips together or more. And, and that's what it took. The Brims back in that day, they was like, I believe they estimated about five thousand. That was a huge. That was a huge gang. The Brims. Oh no shit! Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Brims back in those days wasn't no joke. And you know, back then it was about street fight. It wasn't about the gun play in the beginning. Although you know, you might see a gun here, a shotgun. Uh, um, a twenty-two, maybe a thirty-eight, and mm -hmm. and even guys made their own gun called the zip gun. You know, you a lot of few zip guns in yeah. few neighborhoods. You know, yeah. Explain so, the zip gun real quick. A zip gun is a homemade gun. You know, um, that would be where you go to hardware and you find a pipe to fit a bullet, or maybe even a shotgun shell. 
they mostly were made like from a 12 gauge or a 410, something like that. You find the barrel and you cut it and you put it in there and you put another one and you hit it with a hammer and you pop it. It would shoot. Damn. Yeah, yeah, these homemade guns. I mean, you know, Mm-mm-mm. we were creative then, you know, and I don't. I don't hear nobody talking about the zip gun, so mm-hmm. yeah. you know, just to give you a little little thing on that. Yeah. I remember one gun we had was called the Monster. Uh. We had a gun back back in the day called the Monster. It was a about maybe a six inch sawed off twelve gauge shotgun. You sawed off the handle, you sawed off the the, the buttstock of the handle. You saw the barrel short as you could and put on two pair of gloves and you go to a party, you let both barrels go and everybody go in. Yeah, mm. yeah so and that was the beginning of the gunplay, but mm. before the gunplay was fist fights, you know. Uh, we had the record hops, we had house parties, you know, the record hops was mostly in the parks. Mm. Back then was Real Rogers Park, which today is uh, Ted Watkins. And, and you had a uh, sportsman park. You had um, which now today is uh, uh, Jesse Owens. You had um, Enterprise over there, off of uh, where Irvin Magic Johnson is a little parking back over that way. Enterprise Park. And you had Bloods over there. And then back in those days, you had the Blood Gangs. You had the Athens Park Boys. And you had the Denver Lanes. So, you know, games was starting to grow and evolve in Los Angeles. It, Los Angeles was the mecca of the L.A. street gang, you know. Yeah. And and then they had uh, the Who Rad. Well, the, the Who Rad was once the gunplay came in, I would say in... Um, oh, the Who Rad is when you do, like a drive-by, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. But yeah. it was... Go ahead. Yeah, the Who Rad was... I, it was it wasn't nothing like to drive by. I mean, back then they knew you were coming and and you knew you were going. So you would get ten, twenty cars in a caravan, four deep, everybody packing, and and they knew you were coming. So back then it was some huge, large scale shootouts. Damn. So it was, it was it was it was just a lot going on and being youngsters in those days as young boys and young men i guess we became blind to who we really were and and were supposed to be mm-hmm. you know me today i look at it as and i say america has done a fantastic job on us programming us to go in certain ways because back then you couldn't get a gun like today to get a gun then you had to break in the house or steal it you know okay. nowadays you get one anywhere on the streets for yeah. a few dollars or less yeah there's even rumors where law enforcement can lay guns out in communities you know and you'll find a box here or there you know mm-hmm. damn dude wait say that again <laughs> for everybody I, out I, there who doesn't know what's going on say that again please. yeah I, I say there's even rumors. Find a, okay, you find a box of guns. Yeah, you find a, a treasure chest of guns Meaning, with ammo. Yeah, and and there's obviously legend out there that people like the CIA planted those in the neighborhoods, right? Yeah. Yeah, CIA, even local enforcement. Hmm. I, I would believe, you know. had back in those days you know even law enforcement helped to escalate the gang fights because they would pick up a crip and drop him in a blood neighborhood they would pick up a blood and drop him in a, and here you go uh, uh, so you know if, if somebody beat up your home boy you know we're gonna get together and go back over there and retaliate yeah you know so america has its hand in a lot of mechanisms out here that's uh just keeping this violence going with us but it's 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 time to make a change yeah yeah i hear you You know um yeah i definitely hear you after high school i joined the navy okay 
Um, I did it in four years, and I got honorable discharge. Thank you for your service. And, and, and I did that because I saw where the gangs was going with the gun violence. Okay. And, I, and I didn't want to go kill nobody look like me. Mm -hmm. we, could, we could fist fight. I done got busted up many a times out there. Lost more than what I won. Mm -hmm. So um, when I got out, it, it, the gun violence just escalated. Yeah, oh, it was crazy. And then, you know, when they introduced the cocaine epidemic. Crack cocaine, man. Yeah, that when they crack cocaine, it, it just blinds everybody. And what followed that was these automatic weapons. You had the uh, Uzis, the MAC-10s, and, and all these semi-automatic handguns was, was starting to hit the streets and it, 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 it just got crazy in those 80s. Yeah, because from what I, got, what I understand originally, uh, going back to Raymond Washington, he didn't like guns at all. He was totally against them. He was, you know, let's fight from the shoulders. And Raymond Washington threw dogs. He could fight. Mac Thomas could fight. We had some dudes. I mean, if it wasn't for gangs and they would have been in the boxing, We'd have had some local world champions out there because these dudes could fist fight. Damn. I've seen it. I was there as a young man, as a teenager. You know, when I then we had the record hop at um, Will Rogers Park, which is uh, uh, um, Ted Watkins. Yeah, Ted Watkins now down on 103rd and Central in L.A. You know, the gym. That's where they had the record hop. And Watson, you get the pygmies, and the pygmies, which which is down in the Jordan Downs now, they're crypt now. Mm -hmm. You know, they wasn't exact, they wasn't crypt then, but due to the the growth and the and the escalation of the crypts, it, it was just a growing thing. Mm. Now, at first, that all crypts got together. When, what do you remember about the first crypt on crypt violence or, or death? Um, <laughs> What I remember is I, I know we, we had a meeting at Ted Watkins. I mean, yeah, Will Rogers Park, Ted Watkins. And you had Raymond, Mac, <clears throat> excuse me, Mac Thomas, and you had um, Jamel Lil James. And I'll tell you, it was about 3,000 Crips at that meeting at that park. And then... Um, at the end of that meeting, all the big crips march at the end from that park to the liquor store on 108th and Avalon. And all the baby crips, we was on bicycles. Now, that meeting had so many crips. When the line was in at the liquor store on 108th and Avalon, you still had crips in formation from the park, mm. marching in column of twos. So, you know, back then, we had rank. And, 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 and we have respect for the OGs and, and the leaders and the shot callers. It's not like the day where you get a young guy growing up and once he get put on, he get a little gun, go do what he want. Mm -hmm. Without any respect for his homeboys or his neighborhood. Some, somebody tick him off, I got to go get them. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, it's not like back then. Back then it was, it was much more respect between the gangs on how they associated and even how they had disagreements, you know. So it, it, it's not like today. Today, you know, homeboys are killing their own homies now. Yeah. Yeah, man. It, it's just that bad. And and it's so, it's now, it's, it's, it's just an everyday thing, the killings. But back then, killings weren't really, you know, a big thing. I mean, it was a big thing when it, when it happened. What do you remember about when Raymond Washington was killed? When Raymond Washington was killed, I think I was serving in the service. Okay, so you are. So, okay. You know, the only information I could give you is what I heard from documents, mm -hmm. and especially from Alonzo. He he uh, has a great documentary on that. I I saw that guy is pinpoint on on doing his research and yeah. getting the information. He really and is. sharing it. Shout out to him. I have to, yeah, got to, I got to get him his utmost props on that. So, 
you know, when I look at it, I see where he come through with certain neighborhoods and, and the information is as accurate as you can get. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I give kudos to anybody who's putting the truth to the best of their ability, you know, because you can speak with me and you can speak with another brother over here, over there. The, the stories, they, they might run the same line, but somewhere along the line, they could turn a steer away in another another tale of the story, you know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I have uh, one more question for you, and then I want to talk mm -hmm. about your your books and see if we can promote that and get a few sales for you. But you are well out of the game by 88. Is that safe to say? Yes, sir. Okay, so what do you remember, you know, being out of the game, being one of the ones that just actually started this, that was there 71, you know, 17 years prior. But what do you remember specifically about when the movie Colors came out? Because that is responsible for spreading Crips and Bloods, along with crack cocaine, obviously, across the country. But Colors is one of the reasons why people were banging Crenshaw Mafia in Mississippi. But take me back to that time. Um, back at that time, that was... Uh to uh, explain the who ride back then, you know, uh, it, 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 that 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 movie showed the escalation in the gun play. Mm -hmm. I I think to to make that movie, it also uh, it exploited us and and glorified it yeah. in a way because you know when you see these action movies. Even before that, when you look at Shaft, uh, Superfly, and all those other movies, it it th those those movies was the the um, mindset to change us from identifying who we really are and taking us in the other areas where we we should never explore the pimps, the players, mm -hmm. the hustlers, you know, the shooters the gamblers, the jackers, mm -hmm. and all that. So when you look at the movie Colors, it, I, I, I think that was like a springboard mm -hmm. to excel the gangs in to gunplay. It romanticized it. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. it was a good movie for us, you know, want to make money for the black actors, but the man behind the curtain, he didn't put it out there for that. Mm. He put it out there so we could become hypnotized to that and live in that trance. Mm. You know, it, it's just some movies I think we need to uh, really critique before we go out and watch them. Mm. Yeah, good call, good call. But it was all the rage back then, especially with gangster rap. You know, being at yes. the peak. Yes. You know, people wanted. <clears throat> everything gangster people wanted it and mainly white people well, let's keep it real i mean white people probably oh. bought 80 percent of the tickets you know no absolutely mm -hmm. they have the money we have to wait to boot exactly <laughs> wait till they hit tv <laughs> or something you know sneak in the movie you know i you know um i remember um they had um I'm trying to think of the event they had in compton way back in the day you know compton something they had it at um Compton High School, there was a big thing where all the Crips went. It was huge, and um, you had the Pyrus down there. They was they was thick in Compton, and so I forgot that I can't think of the name of that event. So the big gang fight with the with the Pyrus and 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 the Crips. We had another meeting that day at Ted Watkins and. How we got down there, we was taking the bus. Mm. Every bus came down Central Avenue. Chris filled it up. Damn. Next one came, and if you didn't have a car, and that's how we went. <laughs> Nobody paid. You, just, you, you see 50 or 100 black dudes you, getting on your yeah. bus. You just go and drive. Oh, hey, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, make yourself and, comfortable. And, and telephones weren't readily like they are today. Yeah. So You couldn't call the police and be like, it's 50 you, you just bus. couldn't just called the police i think it was the rtd back in the day damn what a sight that yeah, must be yeah. rtd what a sight that must have been man. yeah <laughs> the rtd you know, so, took me back and, and i remember that night 
we all at the end of that doing the game fight we was running back to get to la i mean it was about maybe two to three four hundred crips that night in gonzalez park right there and 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 in, in the L.A. Sheriff's and LAPD, you can see the real, real just cars everywhere. And, and and in back of Gonzales was this, Gonzales Park was this tall Gators Canal back there. Mm -hmm. And it was just so many crips. Uh, one of the big homies, Joe, Joe Silas, he was on the He tore the fence down, and that gave us the exit where we had to take the, the canal all the way back to Watts. Yeah, so, <laughs> it, it, yeah, it, it, it was, but what was so fun about it back in the day, you got to go home. You didn't have to worry about getting shot like today. Mm. You go get hit with a bat, a bumper jack, a, a, a crowbar, a wheel tire, a, a, you know, it, you might get stabbed with a knife, but it wasn't like today. You know, you don't see no hand fights. Everybody got guns. Yeah, quick to pull. Quick to pull. Mm -mm -mm. And, and everybody's getting shot, but they're taking the target. That's that's the part, uh, Mr. Allen, that really pisses me off. That's the part right there that really gets me mm -hmm. upset. Is that we're yeah we're just aimlessly not we obviously but you know they're just aimlessly shooting in the crowds or, or yeah ugh, yeah man. You heard of Watt Stack? You remember Watt Stack? Watt Stack? Watt Stack. Look up Watt Stack on YouTube. Okay. Now, that's an hour and some video, and I was looking at it the other day because I was looking because at the Watt Stack, that was supposed to be one of the biggest gang fights. The concert? You had, uh, the concert? Yeah, okay, yes. Okay, gotcha. Okay, cool. Yes. Um, you had all the crips to meet to fight the Brims. And um, T. Rogers came from Chicago. They, the Black Gorilla family, he brought them out here. Black P Stones, right? Or yeah. Black Stones or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's it. So, I, I thought it was a huge gang fight also. So, that was one of the big hand gang fights also. So, you know, it, it was, it was, it was beautiful to see, although it's ugly. Because nobody was using guns. It was who had the best hand fighting game in the day? Mm. Yeah. Who could come up with the numbers? And who go win the fight? That, that, that was what it was about. Until somebody couldn't take an AK, an ass kick. Yeah. <laughs> and you had to pull out a gun. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, man. Yeah, and here we are. And, it was at its peak in the you know the eighties and the nineties. I mean, yeah. L.A. literally had thousands. Listen, children, yeah. thousands of yeah. murders a year. Now we're like in the low hundreds. You know, maybe on a bad year, but there were thousands of murders. Man, that's crazy. Yes, yeah. That was, that was that was because of the greed, corruption, of the cocaine, yeah. Yeah. and the money, mm -hmm. and the money. You know, America said, let's kill about a million of them. And how we're going to do it? We're going to guinea pig them. Make them do it themselves. And, 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 and turn me out. I became an addict at that time. Mm. You know? And and I knew I wasn't born to be that. Mm. My home, my own home boys turned me out. So, you know, that, that was a struggle for a few years that I had to go through just to get out of that dope habit. Oh, really? That drug yeah. habit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Damn. Now, I don't, there's very few people to be lucky not to get involved with it some kind of way. Mm -hmm. Either you had a family member or, or you were involved as a dealer or a user or both. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So, you know, and they use Freeway Ricky Ross for that. The CIA, you know, he, mm -hmm. he was a big kingpin with that cocaine. Yeah, so yeah, we had him it's, on my show. Actually, I got a chance to interview him for about an hour, and man, that's a good brother too. Yeah, he was very nice. Gave me a free shirt. Gave my co-host a free shirt. It was really all nice. right. Yeah, <laughs> really good dude. Yeah, really good dude. 
but yeah man um god um talk to me about why you decided to write your book regulate the manual and, and tell everybody out there what it's about and where they can find it well the reason i didn't regulate the manual uh, i had a back injury i was in telecommunications uh worked for time one at the time i had a back injury this was in um 91 2001 2001 okay I did about that too. 2001 and um every day on the news and, and i and i grew up in this stuff i know so much about it i thought i grew up in it but i studied it i watched it you know what set this dude off what set them off you know why are we turning in this direction instead of keeping it the way it was so when i when i'm at home all i see is shooting and gang violence robbery rapes you name it murder and mayhem so i said what can i do to make a change and and, and that's when i decided to write regulate the manual i wanted to write a book about the gangs the gang members the gang bangers and the gangsters how do we get to where we at today and what is going what is going to take to make a change because if we rode in this town on the road there's definitely some roads to ride back out of it yeah it's not a one way street so when, when i read and regulate the manual and i'm going to pull it out although i don't have to but it always helps you i have several uh, you you the table of contents i have the gangs the gang members the gang bangers the who ride here's another alert which is a extension of a gangster and and and, and when i finished that i said well regulate the manual is not complete unless i include everybody so i also include racist gays lesbians and the status quo because we all have to regulate ourselves so you know when you look in the games i started from the beginning you know where the games come from games started hundreds of thousands of years ago men came together to organize to do this or that or whatever yep. so we have what we have today on this escalation throughout history and 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 so when you read that then you go into the gang numbers and what i did there and the gang members i put the reader inside in, in, in each um chapter of the, of the of the manual the reader is in the book so i take in the gang member from one neighborhood to the next neighborhood and each neighborhood you go through gets more dangerous than the last neighborhood you travel so there's a lot of events that's happening tricks and traps you dogs chasing you gang members chasing you hmm. high speed chases uh, uh you got the battering ram in there where the police is coming in and all that with all the equipment and and and, and then in the gang bangers i invite all those who claim to be a gang banger to the house of bane now in order to get in the house of bane mm, you cannot sad. have a weapon because if you claim to be a gang banger what you need a gun for you should be able to hold your home hold your own so there's a lot of tricks and traps and what i love about the house of bang we have the dentist that's coming around pulling false teeth and fake implants if if you understand my philosophy in that because when you turn around everybody you see a lot of grown people today that still won't go to the end of the line and wait their turn mm -hmm. you know yeah and and then the gangster is it's, it's awesome it, it starts from the from the gangster at the curb to corporate you know um I, I have a passage in here and this book is it's in its 10th year publication i have a passage in here that describes donald trump to a t okay what's that what's you that know? message called is there a title for it uh it's inside of the gangsters okay um and and also in the gangsters i have the world's largest casino with all the games that you can play the casino is so large it's out in the forest so 
out in the forest, you're reading the book where people are actually getting lost, walking in circles. And and then you have the who rat, and we kind of spoke about the who rat when we was talking about yeah the the huge drive by right right. And then there's here's another alert, and and that's the part of the book. I wish I could find it. Where where in here it, it talks about subterfuges, ruses, and 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 being above the law because you're in such a high position mm -hmm. you know oh, okay. and out of One. touch ah, so okay. and that's the and, way it describes and, them yes sir oh, okay, okay i think that's page 182 or something if i could find that page i would well, give you a little i'm personally little. gonna i'm personally gonna purchase one within the next 24 hours and i encourage everybody out there to purchase one give us the name one more time of where we can find it we're going to wrap it up and let us know um you know where they can find it and um if you have anything else out there you want to promote okay uh regulate the manual uh you can find it at your bookstore or the desk barnes and nobler have my own website regulate the manual.com you can order it from, the, from there and and um on Facebook, I'm Clarence and Allen. Twitter, I'm Regulate the Man. I'm also Clarence and Allen on uh, Instagram. Um, I've written another book where I cre created a monster and a creature titled The Haunted Soul Brother Summoned. Mm -hmm. uh, the Haunted Soul Brother, he comes from many of the murdered souls throughout time and history that died by violence. We have to imagine anybody died from a violent act called for help. But none came, so they became a murdered soul. Uh -huh. So after many of these centuries and years, many of these the murdered souls have become restless in their grave because nobody came. So they all come together and they summon for something. Uh -huh. And the only monster and creature capable in all the realms of the world to answer such a summon was the haunted soul brother. If you ever make a movie about this, I want to play the Haunted Soul Brother. <laughs> and and what I like about it, it's a Halloween book, and he only walks in a month okay. during October. That's, that's a very cool concept. I like that. And each night he gets stronger and stronger, and the strongest night is the night of Halloween, where he's out there even with the trick or treaters, and they have no idea who he is because many people have on costumes. Nice mix, yeah. Nice. And and so at the at the Haunted end of Halloween. By the break of dawn, he goes back into the ground uh, um, where he came from. And to, I tell you, to come up not again just 11 months later. It, yes. Nice. And so every time I hear of an earthquake or fog, I think of the Heine Soul Brother because back in 1971, we had a huge earthquake here in L.A. And it, mm -hmm. and it caused a crack in the ground. And he come out of Watts, out of uh, uh Taylor Watkins Park out of the flower bed the, the 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 fog starts seeping out of the ground and you can hear the souls moaning and yearning and, and all of a sudden a form come out of the ground in a mesmerized shape nice. and it forms into his haunted soul and and just a description of him I, it's a beautiful book yeah, but you before you get out. before you get to the haunted soul brother I've done research on many of the other monsters. What set them off? You know, Frankenstein, Dracula, Blackula, Casper, the Friendly Ghosts is in there. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, I, I also did research on the monsters of the history of slavery. Mm. So when you when you go into that party, it gets real deep into the yes. monsters of slavery. Because of the horrors that they had to do in order to capture, kill, mm. rape, burn, you name it. Yeah. It's, 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 you have it's a very awesome creative book. mind. You have a very creative mind. I encourage everybody out there to check out his books and make sure you follow him. Clarence M. Allen on Facebook and Regulate the Man on Twitter. Thank you so much. I would love to talk with you, you know, sometime uh, later on in the year and have you on again.